Hey everyone, we're getting our next chapter in regards to air masses and fronts, and uh, by the end of the chapter, you're gonna see how these air masses and how they interact um, will affect the weather and what's going on in a given area at any time. So all an air, mass, air masses is just a huge body of air, and there's two things it's bringing to an area. It's going to have similar temperature, and it's going to have a certain amount of precipitation. And when we say precipitation, you could even change this word right now to humidity, because you're going to see that it could either bring moist, humid air, or it could be, uh, bring dry air. And as this air mass comes into an area, what happens is it changes. So imagine an air mass coming here from a very, very super cold area, such as northern Canada and the poles, and it starts out at a negative 46 C. As it starts moving south, it's obviously going to get much warmer. So it does. It takes the characteristic of where it's coming from, but as it slowly moves into different areas, it will change. So yes, it's the temperature that we're concerned with and the precipitation or humidity. But what they do is they're they're classified by where they're coming from. So and where they originate. So like we saw earlier, you know, the polar air masses are coming from the north, and then you're going to see the tropical coming from the south. And looking here, it all kind of comes together. You, no matter where it's coming from, if it's coming from the ocean, notice we use a lowercase m. That is abbreviation for maritime. Those are going to have humid, moist air. And you'll notice here, the it's going to have your C, and those are coming from land, and uh, that, that's what brings the dry air. And then you can, all the air coming from the north has that polar designation telling us it's cold, and that's always with a capital P. And then the warm air is a capital T for tropical, showing us that it's uh, warm. So putting it all together, this maritime tropical coming from the Gulf of Mexico is bringing warm, moist air to the southeast United States. Whereas in Las Vegas here, we're getting a lot of that continental tropical, especially in the summer, very hot, very dry air. And so the, most of the weather, and we're talking east, east uh, of the Rocky Mountains, think back to last chapter, the mountains are, play a significant um, role in weather in regards to orographic lift and kind of have their own little air masses within them. So we're going to basically look at the eastern United States because it's flat, and what's going on is you're going to... So in the eastern United States, what we'll have is these cold air masses coming from Canada that are dry, mixing with this moist, warm air coming from the south, and we're going to see that it creates quite a bit of weather, quite a bit of exciting weather that goes on. So we'll go through these quick again. We have our continental polar. Remember the lowercase c's, continent, so that tells us it's dry. And then the P is obviously the pole. Think of the poles. It's cold weather. So what these do, these bring dry, cold weather down. These are the cool in the southern months and dry as well. Maritime tropical, these are the humid warm air, especially in the southeast if you've ever been there in the summer. These are the ones that are bring that very, very warm, humid, uncomfortable weather. And it's important to note these maritime tropicals, that's what's bringing all the, most of the precipitation in the eastern United States. It's due to that warm air, warm, humid air coming from the Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico. All right, moving on, continue with our maritime. Again, the maritime tells us it's humid, and the P tells us it's cold air. So this is the uh, air mass responsible for areas like um, the northwest, so Seattle, Portland. They're always getting hit with this maritime polar. It's important to note, as we mentioned at the beginning of the chapter, or the lecture here, that they change over time. So we're going to see that this air comes from Siberia. So here we see Siberia. This air is traveling almost east, southeast, and it starts out cold and dry. But then as it starts to move over the northern Pacific there, it picks up that moisture, resulting in that precipitation falling on the northwest uh, United States. Continental Tropical, we know quite a bit about these living in Las Vegas very dry, very warm. This air, as it moves from Mexico, hits the desert southwest. These are the things also in the Great Plains, Oklahoma, Nebraska, whenever they get those spells of droughts, especially in the summer. It's these continental 
tropical air masses that are trying those out. If they make it all the way up to the Midwest, like Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, you may or may not have heard there's a term called Indian summers where, you know, in October you expect cooler temperatures, the uh, leaves to be changing, and then every now and then there's this kind of week of unseasonably high temperatures, comfortable weather. And again, that's that weather coming all the way from the south in Mexico, reaching the Great Lakes region. So again, an Indian summer is just that warm spell for a little while. And finally, all the action comes is when these two air masses meet. You, when you have a cold air mass meeting a warm air mass, what we already know in regards to warm air holding more moisture, cold air being heavier, we're going to get a lot of, this is where we get the violent weather, and we call this a front. So I want you to think of a front as like in, in battle, two different armies. Where they're meeting is the front line. So fronts is where all the two, where the two air masses are going to meet, and you're going to normally get inclement weather. So our warm front, obviously coming from the south, these would be the capital T. And then a cold front, again, is heavier coming from the north. So here we can see, first off, the symbol of a warm front is these half circles. Best way to remember this is think of them as little sunshines. Like when the sun is rising or falling, you see the sun at the horizon. So that's a good way to think of warm. And remember, warm air is not as heavy as cold air. So when warm air moves from the south, what's happening is it's moving very slowly. And you can notice, looking back at our, the clouds we learned, you can actually see it moving in because that warm air is lighter. It's, being, it's rising up on top of that cold air. So first you'll have some cirrus clouds. And this is days in the making. The first day, you'll, you'll start to see cirrus clouds if you're experiencing cold weather. Then come in the cirrostratus. And usually, right where this front's meeting, that's where you start to get the light to moderate precipitation. So a warm front usually isn't as violent as when a cold front moves in. Looking at the cold front now, these are coming in quick. This is heavy air coming from the north. If we were experiencing nice, warm weather, these things act like a bulldozer. So they'll come in, and they'll force that warm air up and they force it up very, very quickly. And as a result, we get heavy precipitation from cumulonimbus clouds. Uh, another thing to point out here is the, notice the shape of the um, cold front. All it is is just a uh, triangle. Think of icicles when you see that symbol. The last two we're going to work, uh, look at, because it's not usually that simple where cold air overtakes warm air or vice versa, sometimes air is going in different directions, and this, a lot of this has to do with the jet stream up in the upper atmosphere. So with the stationary, just very simple, think when you're on a stationary bike, you're moving, but you're not going anywhere. So in the case of a stationary, cold and warm air are touching, but one's going one direction, the other's going the other. They're not, usually they're going parallel, they're not running into each other. And then a occluded, you're, we're going to see here in a second, where you just have this merging of warm air just getting shot up by fast-moving cold air. So again, here's our occluded front. We have, if we look up here, we have an area of, you know, here's our warm front. We had our cirrus clouds, cirrostratus, heavy precipitation. But what will happen is this cold air behind it is moving super, super fast. So it comes in, and here again, here's a cold front, warm air being pushed up, cumulonimbus clouds, lots of storms. But what will happen is this cold air will even just shove this warm air up even faster. So you just have this accumulation of these two fronts, and then you'll get those heavy, heavy rainstorms, and followed by just light rain and then cold air. So as a result of those, what happens is we have these mid-latitude cyclones. When we say mid-latitude, that's the middle United States. That's why we see most violent weather happening in those central region. And you've also seen, I'm sure, on a weather map, you'll see an H or an L. And what's happening is in areas of low pressure, that's when you have the crummy weather. So it's traveling from east to west, and what it's doing is bringing that inclement, the rain, the showers, the uh, cloudy weather with it. And here's a great picture of satellite of a low pressure system. So to give you an idea, we got Texas, here's Vegas over here. But here you have this warm, moist air colliding with cold, dry air. And our system of low pressure is right there. And what happens is the air is circling and, again, forming these clouds and rain and precipitation. And all we're looking at here is that it's a process. So 
we have all the different fronts that we just talked about, and depending on how the air is moving, we can have stationary fronts. But what slowly starts to happen is, again, the cold air is moving faster than the warm air, so you see this kind of spinning motion uh, counterclockwise. And that's what um, results in those low-pressure systems. And what they do is they slowly move from the west to the east, but as they do, they bring that uh, inclement weather. And as I mentioned, it's that upper atmosphere. You've heard of it before probably when you're traveling by air, but the jet stream is what's pushing that. The jet stream is flowing west to east, and as it flows, it does cause um, that air to spin, resulting in the mid-latitude cyclones. So this diagram does a great job. Remember, we, here's our upper atmosphere. That would be our jet stream up in the top here. And it's just going again from west to east. But here we have areas of high pressure. So remember, cold air wants to sink. So when you see this H on a map, you have cold air that's sinking. It's going down. Not much is happening. Um, but here you have an area of low pressure. You have warm air that's slowly rising up. As it's rising up, it's spinning. And it's bringing this cold air and the cold air will eventually meet up with this warm air. And you guys all know, we just learned, when two fronts meet, that's when you have the weather that brings the storms and the rain. And I don't, this is quite self-explanatory. We've all experienced a thunderstorm, so we don't need to tell you about the wind, the hail, the heavy rain, lightning, things of that nature. Obviously, in Las Vegas, these are mostly happening during the monsoon season, July, August, September, when we have that maritime tropical air actually coming from the Gulf of Mexico, producing these violent storms. And we'll get into why we have this, these, this is the violence of these just due to the nature of the hot air rising, cold air sinking, and um, production of lightning. I'm going to stop there. That'll do it. If you have any questions, as always, you can come see me. See you then.